Why do you think you are that important? Why? Who told you that you were that special? People who talk on speakerphone in public. I cannot stand when people are like walking up and down the aisles at Harris Teeter on speakerphone. That's etiquette. That's Every- a peeve also. Everybody, no. That's a pet peeve. It's probably seven out of 10 people don't like people who chew with their mouth open. We're actually doing a 1500 subscriber giveaway for three people and I haven't announced what the details of that are. Welcome back to the These Wrong Shades Right podcast. That was the creepiest face ever, Andrew. This is Nona. <laughs> I'm Andrew. I introduced us this time. We have links in the description. You should follow us. You should subscribe. You should click like, whatever, on whatever platform. You should go through and do it on all platforms. We're actually doing a 1500 subscriber giveaway for three people, and I haven't announced what the details of that are, and I have to record a short about that. We're not going to talk about it in the video. Thank you for informing me, Andrew. This, this is, is the first I'm hearing of this. It's it's a good one. I got somebody is backing this. It's not us doing it. So. Is it Amari? Yeah. Aw, thank Aww. you, Amari. Aw. I was just guessing Emery. that. Emery. Oh my gosh. Now I feel <laughs> terrible. <laughs> That's how his name is spelled. It definitely is spelled A M I R I. I mean, it is real. He changed his name legally, but that's Wait, not. Wait, what? Now I need to know the real story. Oh my gosh. This isn't what this episode's about. Okay. Well, you should still like, subscribe, <laughs> click the links, do all that, leave the comment. Yeah. Uh, um, no, I feel and, terrible. Emery. Emery. Which is definitely spelled E M O R Y. What? I'm so confused right now. Tony Short. It's like Tony Stark. But it's S C H O R K. I had no idea that he changed his name and it was a fictitious. Oh, I knew I knew who it was. There's a Wait. I didn't know felons were allowed to do that in general. He might have done it before. I don't know. I'm so confused. I have so many questions. Emery, not Amari. Emery. Not Emery. 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 It's like <laughs> skip the middle I. Emery. Oh, God. <laughs> this is really hard for me. So anyways, uh, no one wanted to talk about pet peeves. So I asked... Google Gemini, what the top 20 most common marital and relationship pet peeves are. No. To go, uh, no, no, no. To go along with what you have and what I have and see if they even land on the list. Ew. This is about you and I. It's not about stupid f- Gemini. I don't have any pet peeves. It's not true at all. It is true. Your number one pet peeve is people chewing with their mouth open. That's etiquette. That's everybody a pet hate. peeve also. Everybody, no. That's a pet peeve. Everybody everybody hates it. You guys hate no, it, No, right? not everybody hates it because the people who do it don't hate it. Some of them don't know that they're doing it in the act, and then there's people that do it intentionally knowing that people hate it. Okay, but the people who do it don't think that it's a pet peeve. So it is a pet peeve. What do you guys think? It's probably seven out of 10 people don't like people who chew with their mouth open. Do you like people that put their elbows on the table, the dinner table? I don't care about that. So there's actually, I didn't follow through with seeing what it was, but apparently for those etiquette people that you were talking about, I stumbled upon an etiquette video. It's one of those uh, wired or... Whatever. This was a couple weeks ago. He asked me about if I was going to wear white after Labor Day, and I said no, no, that no, I didn't no, care. No, 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 and he was he was going down a list of things that you should and shouldn't do. And I said, "You sound like yeah. Emily Post." And he was like, "Who's Emily Post?" So separately, I came across a video and I watched it. And I, for whatever reason, I didn't get to the part where he was talking about it. But that is one of the things I grew up not being allowed to put my elbows on the table. You could do it like this. But not like this. Yeah, I mean, I was told that as a child too. But there supposedly there's a reason, but it's an outdated reason. Okay. But this. What is the reason, Andrew? I just said that I didn't get to that point because I had to stop the video. <laughs> but there's a whole reason for it from back in the day. 
So you went on a tangent. Yeah. For no reason. No. Yes. Just to say that. I'm right. Like subscribe yeah. and follow yeah. our podcast on all of the things. That was the tangent express. Okay. Anyways, Andrew. Anyways, no, nah. People wasting my time is my number one pet peeve. No, no. Don't waste my time. No, no. Andrew. No, no. You're dictating my time. No, no. That is literally my <laughs> number one pet peeve. Don't waste my time. I don't waste anybody's time. Everybody wastes my time. No, a perfect example okay. is my ex-husband. Okay. I would never have married him had I known that he was just going to leave me for a younger person. Like, met him at 18, married at 19, had my first child at 20, and then at 27, he packed up and abandoned his entire family for a younger woman. So... I wasted my entire 20s on somebody and I would never have done that if I'd known better. So so now I'm in my 30s and my number one pet peeve is don't waste my time. So you just hit number 17, number 19, number 20, I guess number 18 as well, not being honest. Number 15, not being trustworthy. <laughs> Those are different pet peeves. No, I'm saying that. But yeah, it does kind of tie in together. Yeah. But but in general, just don't waste my time. Don't waste my time. Everybody has a limited amount of time. Don't waste my time. We've already talked about the fact that I'm immortal, right? Oh I'm going to live forever. <laughs> you are delusional, delusional, uh, delusional. Okay. So the first list that it gave me was all, they were almost, Repetitive. They were just different versions of the same thing, it felt okay. like. So I just asked it to give me some funny ones. Mm -hmm. Okay. These are actually pretty good. Okay. But I wanted to hear what your pet peeves I don't were. have any pet peeves. I love everything about okay. you. Okay. Then I'll. It's not a. <laughs> reaction. That's <laughs> not. Because it's not true. It is true. That's the biggest lie you've ever said. No, it's so true. So also, don't lie to me. I don't lie. Okay. My next pet peeve, since you're not playing this game, is people who talk on speakerphone in public. I cannot stand when people are like walking up and down the aisles at Harris Teeter on speakerphone. Why do you think that everybody around you needs to be part of your conversation? Did I tell you? I, I, I can't remember if I told you or not. I was, where the duck was I? This just happened the other day. This guy answers his phone. I'm pretty sure I texted you and I told you that somebody was being annoying. Anyways, he answers his phone, right? But then talks on it like this on speaker. Yeah, I've seen Just that. Just do this. Yeah. Take it off a of speaker. Yeah. Why? Yeah, yeah. Why? 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 Why do you not value everybody else's space enough to put your phone on normal mode? hold the phone up to your head and just have a normal conversation. I have no problem with people having conversations in public. That's not the issue. Don't have it on speakerphone to involve everybody around you. So here's the other thing that's recent, completely related. If you're doing it because you have hearing problems, mm. I have news for you. Apple and Google's new earbuds that both came out this year within the last couple of weeks are both rated mm. as whatever, I don't know what the rating scheme is, as hearing aids now. Okay. And guess what? I'm not talking and, no, about no, those no, no, people. But listen, I'm but talking listen, about everybody but listen, else. But listen, guess what? Those hearing aids or those headphones are cheaper than prescription hearing aids. Oh, that's really cool. So go buy the earbuds that match <laughs> your phone. <laughs> and are like $200 yeah, roughly. And stop using your phone on speaker. Yeah. If it's because of hearing problems. If you're doing it just because you you're want. You're an asshole. You, you think you're important. Yes. Are you having a conversation about how you didn't put enough gas in your boat? Is do you do people need to know that? Are you having what? a conversation? Oh, sounds I know very where it was. specific. I know, I know where it was. It was at Jeff Gordon, and the guy was sitting in the the uh, waiting room for yes. service. Yes, and he was sit. He answered his phone and did that. And they were I cannot stand that. It was Jeff Gordon's service calling him. Yeah. Did it? He should have started the conversation. I'm right here in the waiting room. Yeah, but he I'll didn't. come find you. But he didn't. Oh he had God. the whole conversation right there, and that was my. I texted you. I was my my laptop's 
not charging or it's dead or whatever. Yeah. And yeah, he sat there and I'm like, I cannot stand people and was, who do it that. It was packed. There were no open seats. Yes. In there. It's always in a situation like that. Yeah. Why do you feel that it was a nice everybody day else needs outside. to be part of your conversation? Why do you think you are that important? Why? Who told you that you were that special? Because I certainly didn't. I'm going to start putting on speakerphone and not telling you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Well, luckily you never call me, so I'll just now be under the assumption that I'm on speaker. Well, I call the you one in. S- I call you once in a while. I'm at the store. Then by the time you call me back, I'm already in the car. I'm like too late. Right, because I'm <laughs> usually on the other line with a client, or I'm cleaning. I keep my phone on the counter. I, I don't have my phone on me at all times. Okay. I also keep my phone on silent a hundred percent of the time. I don't even have it on vibrate. Pure silence. So if it's an emergency, you're. I keep my phone on vibrate. Well, I don't. I used to keep it on sound and vibrate. But the problem is, so I always set it on that, that pad over there. Mm-hmm. So when I set it on there and it vibrates, I don't even know. And then I'll look at my phone and you, you like text me two hours ago and you're like, hey, can you start the oven? I'm like, never saw that. <laughs> well, I definitely would never tell you to turn on the oven and then not come home for two hours. So I'm just... I was running You're two being things dramatic. together. No, I'm not. I'm not being dramatic. I'm. I'm. That was the quickest story that I could come up with for that kind of scenario. Okay. 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 Do you have a pet peeve that you would like to share that Gemini didn't create for you? No, I said I don't have any pet peeves. Fine, I'll just keep going. I so. What is the there's a there's a term for it. Um. I, I just love you. I like being with you. Again, I, these are not specific I, to you I that I'm saying. I'm talking about people oh. in general. Oh, okay. That's what I am. I, oh, my God. I hate. Okay. I hate cyclists. Just period. <laughs> okay. You hate my parents. My parents bike everywhere. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm talking about the people with their $12,000 bicycle and their little speed helmet and their body suit going 12 miles an hour on a 70 mile an hour ducking road. Okay. And won't get out of the way. They're middle of the lane, blocking traffic, flipping people off. You're in the wrong. Get out of the way. All right. (laughs) People that I I just saw, I don't remember what. It's very specific, Andrew. Somebody, somebody was actually like a biker hurt you one day. No, but I have hit one before. Oh, you told. <laughs> so you want to tell that story? <laughs> I was pulling. It was it was his fault, and I was nice about it. I was pulling out. This is a, a divided road, mm-hmm. and I was pulling out to turn right. So, what do you do if you're turning right on a divided road? You don't generally look right unless you're worried that somebody's driving the wrong way. You look left and you wait for it to be clear. So I'm sitting waiting to pull out this parking lot onto the road. And as I ease out, dude, boom, runs right into the front fender of my car. So I'm like, I'm trying to get to the airport. I'm leaving work early. I'm going back to my house to grab my stuff. I think I was going to my brother's wedding. So I'm trying to leave, go home, grab my stuff, get to the airport, fly out. So he's, he gets up. We talk for a second. I'm like, you all right? And he's like, yeah, gets back on his bike, finds out the wheels all bent and wobbly and everything like that. And I'm like, I'm doing okay with money at this point in time. I'm like, whatever. Okay. You know, you're a fault. You're for one, you're on the wrong side of the road. You're also not riding the bike lane. You're riding on the sidewalk. There was, he had literally everything stacked up against him. So I took him to Dick's because it was on my way. I'm like, all right, throw it in the back, go to Dick's. We'll see if they can fix it. We go in there and they're like, it's going to take this, it's going to do that. Like, what's the price going to be? And they're like, I don't know, 250 or whatever. He's got like a $112 bike, right? Not even anything. It's a college student biking to his dorm. The kid has no money. So I'm like, all right, let's pick out a bike. Let's just buy it right here. And you can figure out what to do with this trash one. You can carry it home or whatever. But I'm leaving you here with your bike. <laughs> so I bought him a new, it was like $200, $225, something like that. Bought him a new bike. Back in the day when you could buy a bike for $225, now they're all like 500 Just FYI. 
Well, it's because people try to make it trendy again. So they're like, let's make them fancy. Let's add. No, they let's add they literally breaks. doubled in price during COVID. And this was pre-COVID. Right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So. So I bought him a bike. And I went home and got my stuff. And I flew to Indiana for my brother's wedding. All right. So Andrew hates bikers. Yeah. But I could have not. As he was riding. He's on the wrong side of the road. There was bike lane on this road, wrong side of the road, on the sidewalk, not on the bike lane. Okay. Yeah. What else do I hate? Yeah, what else do you hate, Andrew? People that don't know how to drive. Oh, yeah. He says that everybody in Wilmington, but North Carolina in general, are terrible drivers. No, I, I figured it out. I figured it out the other day. Did you see the picture of the where the big... Uh, basically earth opened up um, out in Brunswick County. I can't think I of I literally posted that on my insurance page. I thought that's where you saw it from. No, I got it from the Sheriff's Department before you ever posted it. I got it like when they, it was like three minutes new and somebody had reshared it. You posted it after I did. So no. that's why I thought that you had just reshared no. what I, no. <laughs> yeah. So broad daylight. Yeah. Very clear view that the earth does not exist. Right. Complete sinkhole. Yeah. They fell 10, 12 feet mm-hmm. into the ground. Okay. All because they drove around the barricade. barricades that Brunswick County Sheriff's had set up saying, do not pass. Well, their their post said that we understand the confusion. There, were, uh, there Apparently there were two spots and one of them was fixed. So they said, we understand that people might have been confused that because one was already fixed that the whole road was fixed and thought that it was okay. When you look at the picture where you see the car in the hole and you see where they came from, they could see it from at least a half a mile away. So either they were driving entirely too fast hmm. and couldn't stop or they were playing on their phone. Intentionally trying to wreck their car is what I was playing on their phone. I think they were intentionally trying to wreck their car and or, try to get a payout. Or they thought they could too fast, too furious hit. <laughs> That never even crossed my mind. Yeah. I don't think they were trying to wreck their car. They had their windshield wipers on and it was broad daylight. Uh, or they hit the stock and the windshield wipers came on. Yeah. But so. I think they wanted a new car. I don't think you get a new car when you get a ticket for that. I think because it's your fault, you're probably going to lose money. You're probably going to have a bad time. You're probably going to get a drop by your insurance. TBD on that they, one. they did get cited. It said mm-hmm. in the post that they received a ticket for whatever reckless <laughs> yeah um but no i think that it's a result of all of the other states in the country sending their worst drivers here i think it's all the, all the worst drivers in the country have decided that north carolina is where they want to be they come from new york they come from illinois they come from wherever else because Missouri. north carolina is beautiful And that is the place to be. So why don't they do it in South Carolina or Florida? When I was in Georgia, I had the weirdest experience a lot of the time that I was there. When you can have three or four cars wide on like a highway and everybody was speeding as a pack. It was amazing. So I know it's not people flocking to the south from the north. It's people flocking because they're dumb and coming to an area where they're like, I can just drive dumb here. Right. Stop Stop driving 20 miles an hour under the speed limit. Turning your hazard lights on when it's broad daylight doesn't mean that you can drive 20 miles. A, it's when you drive on the, on the highway, a lot of highways have a minimum posted speed. That's because you're not supposed to drive on a 70 plus mile an hour highway on a moped that goes 40. You will cause a wreck just like you will cause a wreck in town driving under the speed limit. If you were scared of driving or scared Don't of the drive. Air, yeah. Take public transportation, call your neighbor, mm-hmm. call, your, call your grandkids. Yeah, wh- whatever. You, statistically speaking, if you're driving under the speed limit, you are more prone to cause what an accident. What gets me, though, on that one, and I'll, I'll, I'll Kanye you for a minute on that one, are elderly who then say, well, my insurance rates should drop because I'm retired and retired people drive better. And that's a f- lie. Well, they're also buying new cars that have all the different information transponders and all of that's being tracked, so it's not going down. 
Oh, no, I'm spe- t- speaking specifically to they are the worst drivers. Right. And yes, anyways. And if you have if you have a vehicle that has lane keep assist or any sort of self-driving, even if it's not fully self-driving, not, but if it's lane keep assist, all of those cameras, all that data is actually sold as well. So when you don't change lanes with your turn signal, that gets sent to your insurance company. When you turn at the red light without using your turn signal, that gets sent to your insurance company. When you speed in whatever zone, that gets sent to your insurance company. When you drive under the speed limit in a certain zone, that gets sent to your insurance company. They're selling all of it. Sounds like that's your pet peeve, Andrew. Yeah. It's people that people voluntarily giving up this information and being like, I don't know why it went up. I didn't buy the thing. For somebody who doesn't have any pet peeves, you actually have a lot. So carry on. I thought it was supposed to be relationship pet peeves. I never said that. Okay. Never said that. So, yeah. People that voluntarily give up their information and then wonder why. I don't know why. Why did my, why did this increase? Because you subscribe to OnStar. Because you subscribe to Ford Blue. Whatever all of the other ones are. You want to know how to save on your insurance? Disconnect it. What's your next pet peeve, Andrew? Mm, long lines. What? What? At like stores anywhere. Anywhere? anywhere? You don't go anywhere. That's why I don't go anywhere because I don't want to deal with lines. But that's not a way to live. At a certain point, you just have to deal. I do. By not going anywhere. No, I go places and I'm like, this is dumb. Yeah. And you make everybody else miserable in the process. So of you've course. ruined the experience. So at a certain point, you just need to deal. So I, I deal. understand having frustrations about <clears throat> things, but also taking it out on everybody around you is also not how you... Uh, I don't take it out on anybody around me. I take it out on the other people that caused it. I make them not I make true them at feel all. bad. Yeah. You make everybody feel bad for existing no hey you blocking the aisle at costco move okay my next pet peeve is lack of loyalty all of yours have been relationship that's not really that's not specific to a man and woman relationship. Okay. That's relationships in general. Okay. Whether it's business related, okay. whether it's emotional, whether it's uh, financial, lack of loyalty. I'm going to Kanye you real quick. Okay. What? And ask the commenters what their biggest pet peeve is so we can talk about what they think is the biggest problem some okay. other time. In a future episode. Okay. So tell us, what is your pet peeve? <laughs> Give us your, like your top three and don't copy. What, don't, if somebody else has already said it, say something different. Okay. You can comment on theirs and be like, yeah, that was mine too. But then give us three new ones. Be original. You know who I've found to be the least loyal profession? All of them. Realtors. Did you see that their numbers have dropped? 20% or 25%, I might have even been 30% active. Um, agents has dropped that much this year over. I believe it, for sure. And the last time that that's happened, and a couple other things have lined up, was 2008. Mm. Specifically, I'm thinking about realtors in general are just not loyal and always want to push the sale. But think about all of the houses that went underwater in Brunswick County and Carolina Beach, I guarantee you realtors everywhere are telling their clients currently, oh, don't worry about it. It's it's fine. It, it will never happen again. I seem to remember somebody for years saying that they are worse than used car salesmen. I, <laughs> I say that as well. I think that's something we've, we've always agreed on. Okay. Yeah, they're they're trying to make their next paycheck. Yeah, there they was, they do not care about their client at all. No. no matter how many times they've told you to your face, oh, I care about you and your family, and I want to make sure I find a good yeah. place for you and your family. They don't give a shit at all. They put in a little bit of effort. There's to make zero it, effort. No, 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 no. I'm talking. Sometimes they'll come in and they'll 
clean some things up or they'll stage something for you. And then they use that as their key to guilt trip you into saying, oh, I, I did so much for you. Whatever. And it's, dude, you replaced a rug. Like you, you thought that my rug was bad and you had a better rug in storage. You didn't do a lot for me. You just replaced a rug. Yeah. You didn't pay my bills. In fact, you caused, cost me more money. Yeah, no. There's there's actually a trend, and I didn't follow it all the way back, but okay. I saw this on Twitter a couple days ago that people are, the information's always been publicly available, how to sell your home on your own, by for okay. sale by owner or whatever. You can mm-hmm. get it listed on the MLS and everything without being an agent. Mm-hmm. You just wouldn't have access to buy without going through whatever licensing. Because I can buy a key from the NC whatever, the local, the there's like it's like a tri-county. We we used it at a place that I worked at before to build websites for realtors. Okay. So I know that I can buy a key to access the MLS. Okay. Without being an agent, without being an agency. Okay. So anybody can do it. Anybody can buy, anybody can sell. The reason that most people use an agent is because the agent already knows the paperwork. They already know right. the connections. They already know this. So if you have... But they're still going to f*** you over, just FYI. They you, gave no f- about it, your family. If you have the time, you can save yourself tens of thousands of dollars, depending on the price of the home that you're selling. Saving yourself the 3% for your selling agent and then potentially the 3% of the buying agent, because then at that point, you can put it on the buyer. I'm not paying your fee. Mm-hmm. You want to buy my house? Pay your agent yourself. So and that's there's been a huge trend that I've seen where people are like I'm not using an agent when I do it. I'm I've already got this, I've already got that. I I know a real estate attorney, I know the paperwork. I'm just gonna save myself the money. If you the the only thing now stopping you as a buyer is that they do require you have be signed with an agent to view a property now. Yeah, that's crazy. So unless you contact the seller's agent. Zillow does 99% of the work for you. Yeah, but if if you contact a seller's agent mm-hmm. and say, I want to walk through there, you have to sign with the seller's agent. Right. And so now, now they, they're making double. Now they're your buying agent mm-hmm. because you can't. And then you definitely them. can't trust them because they yeah. have their seller as yeah. their best interest. Really, they have their self as their yeah. best interest. But yeah, that was my tangent express, I guess. Realtors are the most unloyal Mm -hmm. human beings I have ever come in contact with. And they make a lot of money for a whole lot of nothing. A whole lot of nothing. It's all smoke and mirrors. It is all smoke and mirrors. And they give zero about you and your family. They just want their paycheck. The next time you go to buy or sell a house, actually read through the agreement. Mm -hmm. And read this because there's a lot of things that aren't going to come up. Like you're not going to whatever you're, you're probably just going to stick with one agent. But a lot of times they have clauses where even if you fire them, you can't sell your house for six months unless you still use them anyways. So, some agents will just be like, I don't want to deal with this, mm-hmm. whatever, and let you go. But then you have people like we've dealt with or they won't. Mm-hmm. And then when you go and do a little bit of investigating, you find out that the house that we were selling they listed it as a luxury property because it was the most expensive house that they had ever sold. And it was not expensive. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I told you that. I took a screenshot. No. Maybe I didn't send it. Okay, yeah. So <laughs> it was not a luxury property by any factor. The property wasn't luxury. Like the lot was not luxurious. Structure was not luxurious. This is the first I'm hearing any of those. The interior was not luxurious. Hmm. Nothing about it was luxurious. <laughs> it was Stephen's not so fine homes. Yeah. And then I did a few upgrades to help sell it. I did upgrades. I did lots of upgrades. Okay. I did nothing apparently. I didn't say that you did nothing. I'm just saying you tried to take the credit, but we both did upgrades. So to, yeah. It it comes back to pretty much everything in this day and age of communication, technology, or whatever. All you have to do is say something. It doesn't matter what you're saying or why you're saying it or who you're saying it to. If the person, if your audience believes you, that's all that matters. 
If I say my house is luxury and somebody's like, you know what? I like this property. It's very luxurious. And I sell it. That's all that matters. Mm. Right? Sure. Sure. But this podcast is the number one podcast in the world. Did you know that? Okay, Andrew. It is. It's the, the number one. Remember when we were talking about world records? And I said how there's always... You, a record for a record? Yeah, there's all these like qualifiers and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I can find... And truck commercials do this. As soon as I make this analogy, you'll get it. Ram. When Ram spun off from Dodge, mm -hmm. they ran commercials saying the fastest growing truck company in America. You know why? Because they had just started. They were the only new truck company in America. Yeah, they had just started. So we're the fastest growing husband and wife podcast. Yeah. That will ever be. Yeah. Okay. We are the number one fastest growing podcast on this street in Wilmington. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's a lot of qualifiers. Yeah. But people do. That's all marketing is. Is carving out. Because they, they say the words and then they put the little fine text down there, right? That's okay. all you have to do. We're the number one podcast in America that was founded in 2024 in Wilmington, North Carolina <laughs> in a office in their home. <laughs> and it's this many square feet and they have this piece of equipment. Oh, my gosh. And he's not wearing shoes today. Nah. Okay. And seriously. That's how, that's how, all of it, all of it, all of it. The, the number one movie in America. So is this year? Sure. Yeah. Marketing. <laughs> the number one company in America or the number one movie in America or whatever that they run. If you go and look at Amazon, any product, every product on Amazon has this. Okay. They have what are called their BSR ratings, right? Best seller ratings. But okay. So the R is redundant. Okay. You have an overall. So out of every product sold on Amazon. How's this rank out of billion, right? So like if we sold a t-shirt on Amazon, it probably ranked 37 billion out of 1.5 trillion, but we'd be in like the top 74%. <laughs> so we're a top 74% product on Amazon that people will use that. Okay. And then you have individual categories. So when I was working on marketing for the different books and stuff a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. you have, uh, Let's, let's say your your top level category is book, right? And then you have nonfiction. And then you'll have war bio of Marine from Afghanistan from this year. That would literally be a category. Number one in that category out of 73. Okay. And we would run graphics and videos and voiceovers. The number one rated blah, blah, blah on Amazon for this category. Big banners, like we're celebrating, we sold X amount. But then there's tools if you wanted to actually go and figure it out how many copies they've actually sold because Amazon will give you um, a broad view of what they're doing everywhere else. It's kind of like how YouTube to us can tell people how how well we're doing on Spotify and Apple. for Because those aren't publicly available numbers, just like Barnes & Noble book sales are not publicly available. They're available to the publisher and to the author, but they're not available to you and I. Okay. So you can go and you can say on Amazon in books for this 30 day period, I was ranked number seven and you can get a range where it can be like, okay, they sold between 300 and 450 copies. And then you can compare it to a known number that was in that same range 30 days ago. Say like Oprah drops a book or whatever, right? Like, okay, Oprah was in this category and this number, and we know because it's published in public that she sold X amount of books. So this guy, between his 300 and 450 range, probably sold 302, and at $17.99 a book, this is how much money they made. Okay. So you can go and extrapolate all that information. There's tools on, you can Google it, like BSR Calculator, I think, is the one that I use for a long time. And it's pretty damn accurate. And I know this because I would ask the publishers because I'm working with them to do the marketing on the client's book. Like, hey, uh, this is my, my guesstimate based on the BSR. And they're like, oh, yeah, that's about 3% off. Pretty close. So, yeah, it's okay. all find. All you have to do 
find the audience, find your talking point, and then make it look like an achievement. We are high achieving individuals over here. Yeah. See, I hate marketing and yet I have to do it. You market yourself as a marketer though. Because I have to do it. I might, I'm the best at it. I'm the number one. <laughs> but you literally present it to your clients as something that you offer. Because I know that they're going to get run down by all these people saying, hey, I can do this and I can do that for this money and this package. I'm like, I can do that laying on the couch in 12 minutes. I'll charge you this much money. Because realistically, a lot of it is stuff that they could do themselves. It's the convenience fee and the convenience factor. Do you have the time? Do you want to have to go through and learn something completely new? It's not that you can't, but do you want to? Do you want to invest the time to do it yourself? Do you want to go subscribe to Adobe or Canva or whatever other tools there are and then learn how to use those tools? Do you want to pay for these expert classes to teach you how to draw? Do you want to do all this stuff or do you just want to have somebody else do it for you? And, you know, you can pay somebody, you can go to somebody in India or you can go to like Fiverr. You can pay somebody $12 to make you a logo. Or do you want to learn, do you want to subscribe to Adobe for $112 per month and take classes to learn how to make a logo and then spend the time making the logo? Or do you want to go pay the college student $24 for their time? That's where these people make their money. They make their money being the people that do the job that you don't want to do yourself. Like a plumber. Do you want to go learn how to plumb? No. <laughs> so anyways. So anyways. My final one is cheating. It used almost. to be my number one. And it has moved down on my list. Because I'm not a cheater. You don't have to worry about it, so now it's not top of mind. But the sad thing is, everybody else is besides us. I feel like we've seen it in other relationships, and it's become so prevalent that we are now the outliers, which is insane to me that that used to be my number one disgust, and I wouldn't even call it a pet peeve because how can breaking vows, be a pet peeve, but that used to be my number one. And now it's my bottom barrel. That is so sad. I don't see how it became lower on the list. It just, but. it's moved down on my list because it's, it's not something that I have to worry about between you and I, but it's, something that we see almost daily around us. You should see some of the comments um, that have been filtered. I, so I go through and I approve the, all these terrible comments because I want people to see how stupid you are. Okay. Because it doesn't impact. Speaking of the comments. No, no hold on. He hold on, let hold on, me know hold on, hold on. about what you guys were saying about me and I'll say one thing and one thing only. Other people's opinions of me is none of my business. You infecting my mind with their vile words is not anything that I need to know. I'm telling you how dumb they are. I have to read it, them all. It That doesn't matter. You don't need to pass that information okay. on to me. Okay. No one doesn't want to know you guys' comments. I don't care what you guys have to think about me or say about me, but... But you have to read all the comments. But you don't need to then pass it on to me. Okay. It's there's, none of my business. There's people um, on Reddit and... I mean, they're everywhere, but... The majority of the comments that I've seen about Reddit, they're like, "Oh, clearly she wears the pants." And how how often does she unlock your your PP cage? And all <laughs> they think that you control everything about the relationship because you're the attractive one. Well, they're so definitely to, wrong in I that. To, I'm, he controls everything. I don't control anything. He controls everything. I just exist. No, I exist. No, I exist. So. Oh, we got 39 minutes. Okay. I want to run through some of these real quick because maybe they'll maybe they'll jostle something and give you something funny to close out on. I'm just going to go right on the list. 
uh, hogging the blanket, the epic nightly tug of war blanket dominance. We don't have that problem because we don't. I use a really thin blanket. We've she's, already had a conversation about this on the podcast. We do it. European, Denmark, Sweden, something. It had a name to it. I can't remember. Selective hearing. Suddenly developing superhuman hearing for the TV, but going deaf when asked about taking the trash out. Is there an example? You would know. <laughs> the phantom farter. Blaming the dog, the cat, or even the ghost when it's clearly them. <laughs> Every time he farts, he says it was Bella. He blames it on my dog and my dog only, and he'll let one rip. And it was Bella. We'll be out, which never happens, but we'll be out at a restaurant. It was Bella. Bella's not there. You can't blame Bella. Uh, the bathroom DJ. Belting out and shower, belting out shower tunes like they're headlining Coachella, oblivious to their of their uh, oblivious to their tone deafness. We know somebody. <laughs> it's neither of us. Do you sing the shower when I'm not around? No. Oh, okay. The refrigerator eating all the leftovers, but leaving the empty container as a cruel reminder of what once was. <laughs> that sounds like one of the kids. Drinking all the way to the bottom of the juice container and then leaving the container instead of throwing it away. Um, the I'm fine liar. Yes, that's my go-to phrase. I'm fine. Everything's fine. It's all fine. <laughs> Insisting that they're fine when their face is clearly saying, I'm about to explode. Cue the dramatic sigh. That's what it says. Uh, I'm fine. The chronic misplacer. Constantly losing their keys, wallet, phone. That's him. That's totally to also, him. I don't ever lose anything. Oh, my God. And then you blame it on everybody else. You're like, who moved my... No, I just ask. No, you blame it. You immediately go to who moved it, and then I'll find it for you, and you'll be like, oh, yeah, I must have put it there. The sock monster. Leaving single socks all over the house, creating a never-ending laundry mystery. Oh, uh, you leave both socks together in random places and it's disgusting. That's where I take them off at. To it's put on my disgusting. Socks. It's disgusting. There's been a sock floating around for like days that it keeps taking in people's shoes <laughs> seeing who's going to claim it. Uh, the backseat driver offering unsolicited driving advice even when they're just a passenger. Bonus points for dramatic gasps. Um, you mean passenger princess and you being a very aggressive driver I'm not aggressive. and coming up on people really fast makes me no, <sighs> I just know how to drive efficiently. Um, I would not say that having a heavy foot is driving. I don't efficiently. have a heavy foot. You do. And yes, I know. I don't, I get better miles per gallon than you do. Driving fast is not the same as driving poorly. You drive poorly. No. In I drive, my opinion. I drive very efficiently. That's why I have very good gas mileage, even though I'm driving fast. Driving fast is driving efficient when you know how to drive fast efficiently. Which is what there's I feel term. that I do. There's a t And you disagree with that. So we are in disagreement over each other's driving. Because I know that you don't. It's all from f stemming from racing, knowing how to take turns efficiently, knowing how to merge and swerve, saving your tires, but still moving quickly. There's a lot that goes into it. Cooper, Cooper's like completely spooked now. He thinks that I can see the future. I do not believe you. He, I was telling him the other day we were driving to school. I was like, that person right there is going to go up two cars and cut off that Dodge that's up there. And he was like, how do you know? I was like, watch, it's going to happen. And then they did. And then I kept telling him all these things. Were, they're going to swerve and they're going to cut off that semi over there. And I bet you they're going to try and turn right at that next intersection. And then it happens. He's like, what is going on? <laughs> like, I, you can tell based on how somebody favors something. And then they're, they, they're, they're going this way, but they have this vehicle in front of them and they see this gap over here and they think that they're going to get around it before they get to where their turn is. Yes, we've all been in situations like that. But I can do it all the time. I know what every car at every direction is doing. Yes, nobody else can drive, only Andrew can. No, that's not what I'm saying. Uh, 
The toothpaste squeezer. Squeezing the toothpaste from the middle and leaving it mangled. I don't know why you're looking at me. Because I have to come back behind, not just on the toothpaste, on the sour cream, on the peanut butter, on whatever else we have in a squeeze tube. And I push it all the way from the top seam, push it all the way down, do it on our toothpaste too. Yeah. Uh, the closet avalanche, opening the closet door and, cr- and causing an avalanche of clothes to tumble out. We had a closet system collapse, but it wasn't because it was like over full. It was just a janky, cheap closet system. And it happened to pull out of the wall because it was installed by the builder poorly. <laughs> uh, the hairy situation, leaving hair in the drain. They call it a miniature horror show. I call it a rat's nest. You know, I actually asked this months, maybe years back, which people hated more, the beard hair in the sink or the hair hair in the shower drain. Mm-hmm. And even the women said that the hair, their own hair, and like stuck to the shower wall and on the drain was more disgusting than I'm like, you, you're the one that did it. Normally people are like, oh, I don't like yours because it's yours. I don't care about mine. But they had admitted that they don't even like their own hair in the shower. Everyone hates it. Uh, the snooze button addict. This is none of us, at least. Do you know anybody that's a snooze button addict? You're not that way now. I never was. When we first got together, it was exhausting listening to your alarm multiple times. It was never... It was never... a. Like a snooze button. It, it was, was I had something. a lack of regard for the other person in the room with you. It's that simple. Sounds like somebody I know. I don't even have an alarm, Andrew. It's not about alarms. It's about everything else. The noise and slamming doors and slamming other things and turning on lights. And yeah, it's all there. So I wanted to. Uh, I'm going to ask it, give me 10 that are general. While he's doing that, since we did talk about Brunswick County flooding and um, the car that went in the ditch, the other thing that occurred was Fix a Friend went completely underwater and they lost all of their medical equipment. And there is a GoFundMe, and I would like to link it at the end of this. Okay. Um, that way, if anybody is willing to donate even just ten dollars, podcast they lost dog got cut by them. All of ago. their equipment, and they do all of the spays and neuters for cats and dogs in New Hanover County, Brunswick County, and Onslow County, and, um, Pender. and Pender County. Yes, yeah. yeah. so it's four counties that depend on this one clinic: Brunswick County, New Hanover County, uh, Pender County, Onslow County. That's four counties. Oh, there was another one. That's four counties. I'm pretty sure. Um, what's the What's the one that, um, the lake? That's Onslow County. I already mentioned them. Anyways, so I. What's the one? Jackson, ev- what's Jacksonville? Um, because that's where she came from. That's where their headquarters is. That's sort of like the, the angels or whatever. Oh, um, Columbus County is yeah. uh, Lake Waccamaw. Onzo County is Jacksonville. Okay. Yeah, so it is five. I don't know that for sure that Columbus County is part of it. Yeah. But anyway, okay, so maybe five. Anyways, for every day that they're closed, that's another dog or cat that is definitely procreating. So, and they're fully nonprofit. Yeah, so if you can donate even just $10, please do because they need all of that equipment back so they can help all the cats and dogs in the area and get them spayed and neutered. Mm-hmm. Um, all of the shelters depend on them. Um, people in the area go to them for discounted services and they do clinics like rabies clinics and things like that. They, so our rescue podcast dog, who's not in here cause we have dog gates and have had dog gates for a while. That's why I guess I haven't seen her. If you're new here, we call her podcast dog because she would just, just walk in and want attention while we're recording. Um, when we rescued her a little over two years ago, that's who did it. And they were commuting two counties away to do that. I just thought at first I thought it was because it was close to me. I was 
Oh, yeah, I can drive right there. It's only 30 no, minutes No, there away. are, like, no options yeah. here. Without going to a regular vet. I mean, there are vets. Right, right. So I took Bella yeah. to a regular vet to get um, spayed. Yep. All right, I'm going to power through. We're already at 49 minutes, so I'll just I'll hit a couple of them without reading the context. Okay. Slow walkers in a crowded area. Always. Okay. Get yeah, I, I, I walk around them. But when you're with the kids and stuff and you're trying to bob and weave and you're telling, Cash, come this way. Cash, go. Charlotte, yeah, we see that thing, but get around grandma. Uh, oh, number two is yours. People who talk loudly on their phone in public. Uh, drivers who don't use their turn signals. My other one to add to that is drivers who use their turn signals when they don't need to and shouldn't. If you're in a roundabout, we all know where you're going. <laughs> you're turning right. You don't need to have your right turn signal on. We know you're turning right. Mm. Um... People will leave their shopping carts in the middle of the parking lot. Oh, God. Yeah, no. Straight to jail. That's the Alf Alpha Bros thing. (laughs) That's how Alf Alpha Bros started. I don't know what that is, but straight to jail. The the Alpha Alpha Males, and then you had the Alf Alpha Males. So Alpha Males are, ooh, I'm an Alpha Male. And then the Alf Alpha Males are the guys who take their cart and put it away. (laughs) Have you ever walked it back into the store? No, but I leave it in the store. Well, that's because when he goes to the grocery store, he gets like two things, two things of Red Bull. That's it. So, yeah, you don't need a cart for that. No, because it's the same as when people Whereas say. Whereas when I go to the grocery store, I'm getting a full cart and a full trunk load of groceries. You also don't go to the regular grocery store where they give you bags. You go to Costco where everything's its own piece. Okay. So you don't have hands. But anyways, the point being... If I park close enough to the entrance, I'm walking it back to the store. I'm not even putting it in a cart corral. I've never seen that happen, but I'm not saying it hasn't. I've never seen it happen. It's because you don't go grocery shopping with me. So I have. No, you don't. Ago. Long time ago. Well, uh, I've invited you to multiple times, and you always tell me no. So the answer is no, you don't. Line cutters. I, yes, I straight to jail on that. Loud, loud, uh, loud chewers. Uh, is this like on the smacking variety? Because that I can't Says stand. Both. Says both. I can't stand a smacker. Showing with their mouth open like, or creating an unpleasant symphony of smacking and slurping. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, people don't clean up after their pets. Mm, yeah. Don't leave your, <laughs> they said landmines, leaving behind landmines. <laughs> um, people leave their trash behind in public spaces. Yes. People who constantly complain about the weather. People who reply all the emails that don't need to reply all. <laughs> and that's their top 10. Okay. You know that if if you only see one person in the sending line and reply all appears in the email, it means it's been BCC'd to either tracking software or there's other people. So if you do hit reply all, the person that they bcc does get it. But if you only hit reply, only the sender receives it. Okay. Food for thought. Next time you see an email that you're like, oh, and you have the choice. If you have the choice, but you only see one person in the two, or I mean, from CC, there's nothing else in there. It's because they send it either as a, through a tracking service, a CRM, or, you know, maybe a, an attorney or something like that. who's BCC, whatever the, whatever, apply the logic to whatever the case is of your actual email. And you'll understand what I'm saying. Okay. Yep. All right. Drop your pet peeve down in the comments. And please donate. On anywhere. And we're, yeah. And we're so, yeah, just leave wherever you're listening to this at. It doesn't have to be on YouTube. It could be on Spotify. It could be on Apple. It could be on Amazon. It could be on Stack, Stack, over, no, not Stack Overflow. That is a thing too. Substack. It could be on uh, Rumble. It could be on wherever. Just leave a comment. And donate. And donate to fix the friend. An, well, it's Angel something. Okay, so it's that's two different. Um, the nonprofit is adopt something an, an, adopt an angel, yeah, and they're the ones that own fix a friend. So, but there's two different fundings. Adopt an angel. They are taking donations for. They're the ones that own the equipment. Rescues, and then there is also a GoFundMe to apply back to the equipment directly for but fix a friend. So there's, all, there's two different ones. Yeah, but it's all, they're the ones that own the equipment. They even put that in the post that they're the ones that own the equipment. 
Okay. So find that link down. It'll be in the pinned comment. Not even, It'll be in the description, but it'll also be in the pinned com- on YouTube. Can't do that anywhere else. So everywhere other than YouTube, description, YouTube, description, and pinned comment. Boom. Got it. Nailed it first time. Good job, Andrew. Bye. Goodbye.